Hello, welcome to Nige Tutorials. I'm Nige. This tutorial is going to be Camera Intent Tutorial Part 1. In this tutorial, we're just going to be introducing you just to the basic setup of an Android project using Android Studio. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to click here, start a new Android project. application name I'm just going to call it camera intent tutorial you understand down here is your company domain um, if you've got a website you can use a, uh, a web URL notice how the URL is the reverse of what you normally see so I'm just using com.nigel.com.nigelhenshaw um, so you can use whatever you like in this sort of format Okay, click next. Um, project location is just the default location of when where I installed Android Studio. So we'll select next. Okay, um, I'm not going to use the very latest um, Android 5.1 at this moment in time. Uh, I'm just going to use 5.0 because I haven't updated my Nexus device, but use whatever um, version of Android that you're going to be running on your device. We'll select next and I just want to use a blank activity here I don't want to have anything else extra installed for the purposes of tutorials if we need to add function functionality we'll do that manually so blank activity um, I'm just going to call this I think we're only going to have one activity for this project so I'm just going to call it camera activity and that's it we can just select finish I'll wait for it to do its stuff okay the project's basically nearly completed here it's Android Studio has automatically direct us, directed us into the layouts and it's created a uh, layout file for us, a relative layout file for us. Um, so relative, um, I'm just going to select design over here. As you can see in this area here you can get lots of different types of layouts. Um, I'm not going to spend time discussing them all. I will create another tutorial showing up in the box here where I will go in a little, into a little bit more detail about layouts. Anyway, what I did is I selected the design here, so you actually see what your application is going to look like when it's first run from your device. Let's go back into the text tab, and the main thing here is we're using a relative layout, and we've got a text view, so by default, Android as a default project has set us with a little text view called Hello World there. So when you run the application, you're going to get Hello World text show up. So this is a key point here. Views live inside layouts. And if we go back here, um, you see you can get lots of different views. They tend to have um, view appended to the end of the name. So maybe not down here, but you've got uh, a good selection of views. And you can also create your own views if you want, um, uh, inherent off other base view if you wanted. Okay, so that's the layout file. Let's, I just want to show you a couple more important files just for reference here. The next one that lives inside the Manifest folder at Manifest is called the Android Manifest XML. This is a very important file. Never forget this file. It's not used to hold your source code as such or your libraries. What it is here is the glue that holds all your project together. Um, you can add permissions, which we'll go into detail later on. Permissions are if you want to 
use extra functionality from your camera, whether it's storage, or whether you want to use the actual camera itself, APIs, or if you want to even use Google APIs, um, they have to be added as permissions, and that would go into the manifest file here. Um, I've got the application, you need to have the application, basically you have to have your Android application defined. And inside the application, you can, you've got these activities here. So the activity is just a representation of what you see on your screen at any one time. It's basically the activity matches, is mapped to your layout, which can contain any number of views. So you need your activity, it's what you see in your application itself. Um, inside here, we've got the activity name, and that's the camera intent activity that I called. And the last point here I want to highlight is the intent filter. So the intent filter is what you define starts your application, or what, sorry, what you define starts your activity, or how your activity will respond to a message, or communication. So an intent activity here is just basically you say how you want your activity to start, what triggers it as such. And the main thing down here is the category. So we're saying that this is the category launcher. Basically that just means when you see the icon you launch the application manually from an icon and that's what this intent filter does. It means it's the entry point into your activity, starting your activity or starting your application itself by defining launcher here. So we won't go into any other details at this moment in time, we'll sort of build on, build bit by bit progressively. And the last file I just want to show you here is the camera intent activity. Okay, we're only going to focus on the un, un, on create function. So activity here is what we defined inside our Android manifest there. And the actual source code lives in Java, our project name we defined before. And here's our source file here. So here's our activity that extends an activity. That's the name of the class name of the activity. And inside the on create here, so we've just got one function I want to focus on here called set content view. Set content view is where you want to um, where you want to display your activity onto. Basically, it's just displaying your activity onto a layout. And so, basically, we've got the set content view. Um, it doesn't have to be a layout. You can um, put a view inside here as well. Just look in the Android documentation for that. But normal practice of when you default create an activity is you'll get a layout file here. And basically when you enter the layout file inside this function, it inflates the layout file with what you defined. Going back to your layout file, with what you defined in here. And so basically you're just going to have a single text view displayed in there saying hello world. Okay, that's basically all there is to creating your default project. You can, I'm not going to go into details about the on create option menu or the on options menu selected. That's the menu functionality of an application. It's given to you by default. It's outside the, what I want to focus on, this tutorial here, so we're just going to leave it out. Okay, that's it. So the next step here is I just want to run my Android application I created from default. I haven't made any changes or anything. This is just the default view here. So I just go up towards the middle top and I've got run app, control R if you're using a Mac. And so I'm just going to select that now. And there's something happening right at the very bottom there. And I've got a Nexus 4 plugged in via USB cable to my MacBook. So I'm just going to select OK. And I'm going to start recording that. OK, so I now have 
that's your application running on here. I'm taking a recording of this as well to make it easier for you to see. And I actually don't have anything else to say about this because that's the application. It's just a single text file saying hello world. So that's it. That's the default out of the box. Okay, so I'll go back to my Android Studio. There's just one final thing I want to do here and just to show you. Uh, next to the play button, we've got a debug app. And what you can do there, you can set points in your source code in your project where you actually want the application to stop running, stop executing, so you can see what's happening at that moment in time inside the application. So I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of that. First thing we're going to do is add a breakpoint. So all you have to do is next to the number in the source file here, just clicking on my mouse pad, we've got the orange dot there. That's a breakpoint. So when I execute this application to run again, um, it's just going to stop at this particular line. So we just click this. Runs a bit slower because it's actually going through an additional set of libraries which are mapping to each function call. So we have the file here. Okay, and we've stopped at this line. What we also see here is I can actually step down the lines of the source file, or I can step into the functions being called themselves, whatever I choose, and I can actually see the variables inside the function, inside the uh, file itself, um, so I can actually see what values are being assigned and whether or not a variable has got data or is null as such. So at the moment, um, inside this function, there are no variables, but we've got lots of member variables in the actual activity itself. And um, yeah, so it's, it's a good point, especially if you're starting to have problems with your application and you suspect that something's not happening in a certain place. One of your first point of calls is to use this debug app and stop what you think something's going wrong and to have a look around there. So that's a quick introduction to the um, Android Studio debug functionality. And that's basically all. This is just a very basic intro to people who probably haven't seen Android before, maybe know a bit of C++ or Java, but um, just you know, very curious to see what Android and Android Studio is about. So in this very basic tutorial, we've learned basically a bit about the structure of Android the Android manifest file, um, activities, layouts, um, and the uh, in intent filters as well. So just very basic intro to what happens when you set up your default project. The next tutorial we're going to be doing, moving on with the camera intent project, is we're going to be manipulating the layout a little bit, um, removing the hello text file and adding a button. So. If you think you're going to like these types of tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. And um, there will be plenty of links to follow on tutorials. And also, um, I'll be putting some background reference tutorials on particular basics of Android if, if, if they're very important and pertinent to these tutorials and learning about Android. Anyway, that's bye from me for this one. And look forward to um, talking to you soon. Okay, so I'm holding this up here now. I'm going to select take photo, camera button press. So we've validated that our button functionality does work. And that's all we really wanted to do for this tutorial. Very simple, just progressive bit by bit steps.